afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our play entitled The World Without Black People. Our play opens on Monday at the Blessed and Highly Favored Cafe. There are quite a few locals, local faces in the place. However, the table we want to observe is the one that is set up for the VIPs. <laughs> Around this table will be sitting the members of the elite social club. This group of senior ladies have seen it all, know it all, and have no problem telling anyone about it all. As they arrive, let me introduce you to them. Here is Melvina, a retired administrative assistant. She is coming in with Alma, a former nurse. Here is Josephine, a retired postal employee. And Pauline, a retired police officer. And Geraldine, a retired military service member. Wait a minute. Wait, wait just a minute. Someone is missing. Someone is missing. Oh, Daniel Arthur Dixon. And yours? 
knew that. Hmm. Oh, Lord Daniel, don't get that started. We don't want to get used to that. We just came out to drink coffee, sit, and do some idle talking. We don't need a history lesson. Okay. Okay. Joseph Bain, I certainly hear you and understand. However, have you ladies ever wondered what the world would be like without black people? No black people? None at all?
Return to the restaurant and see what the ladies have for Mr. Daniel. <laughs> Let's listen in. Oh, 
Yeah. 
here. And I certainly hope you can get your clothes dry for your trip. However, hmm. how this experience make you feel? Well, it made me furious because I didn't have anything there. Nothing that I could do. So yeah. I was totally furious. Furious. All right. Furious. Okay. <laughs> furious. <laughs> well, Vina, can we hear from you? How was your day at the Okay, everyone. My day was an absolute mess. But as you can see, it went downhill from there when I decided to take notes. I reached for my pencil and my lid was broken. And there was no pencil sharpener available. So I reached for the pen, Daniel. And like you said, it had been invented by a black man. So it wasn't available. So I decided open up my closet to get down my handy dandy typewriter. But it wasn't there. I sat down and decided to have a cup of coffee and read the newspaper after all that. And there was no newspaper around. I sat there and I looked at my list and I saw that the pencil sharpener had been invented by John Love, a black man, and the typewriter, also by a black man, the bridge, and the advanced printing press that created the newspaper was created by a black man, W.A. Lovett. I sat and looked at my world with none of these black people in it, but me, <laughs> I wasn't happy. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. So how did that make you feel? I was miserable <laughs> because everything that I took for granted was no longer available because the black people that invented them were no longer available. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Miserable. Okay. Miserable. All right. Geraldine, I certainly hope your day went a little better. Not really. I was born in the looks department. After getting dressed and making some semblance of shoes, I had a doctor's appointment to attend. However, I could not get there. No automobile or buses were running. Frederick M. Taylor, a black man, invented the control device for the internal combustion. But even if I could get it, what if I needed a specific medical apparatus? Like a pacemaker, invented mm -hmm. by Otis Orkin, a black man. Mm -hmm. Or the cataract removal probe, invented by Dr. Patricia Babb, a black woman. Mm -hmm. Or the stethoscope, invented by M. Hotep, a black man. The blood plasma bag was developed by Dr. Charles Drew, who also designed the blood bag. He was a black man. Yes, yes, yes. And then there was the urinalysis machine, invented by Dean Sand, a black man. Oh, and Alma, even with your cell phone, you would be in deep weed if you need open heart surgery, because there would be no Dr. Daniel Cam Williams, the first open heart surgery, a black man to help you. None of these people or things would be there. I miss my Well, I am sorry that you missed your appointment. But how did that experience make you feel? This war, I would never miss a medical And it is, my dear. Woo! How was your day? <laughs> I took on a challenge and told the challenge to bring it. And as you look at me today, you can see it has been brought. <laughs> <laughs> I, like the others, had the same dressy fiesta, which explains my lack of beauty. <laughs> Oh, please, girl. <laughs> As I was about to say, I placed four pairs of thick socks on my feet and went to take the elevator down to the first floor. 
But when I got there, there was no elevator. So I had to take the stairs. So what's wrong with that picture? And as I was going down, it was getting hotter. Once on the ground floor, I walked to the small grocery store, which had no cool air. None. As I quickly purchased some milk, butter, eggs, and a gallon of butter pecan ice cream. <laughs> and I noticed these things weren't as cold as they should have been. I noticed the cold things were a little less chill. So I walked back to my building. As I arrived with my two bags of groceries, I remember those four flights of stairs I had to climb. <laughs> I entered the door to the building. The temperature had risen drastically. I wiped my brow, straightened my back, <laughs> and forged on. When I reached my floor, I sat down for a minute and rested. Then I went inside my apartment to place the thing in the refrigerator. The refrigerator was gone. Forgive me. I checked my list. The elevator was invented by Alexander Myers, a black man. The air conditioner was invented by Frederick Jones. A black man. <laughs> the refrigerator was invented by John Stanley. A black man. I set the ice cream and the butter in the sink and the rest of the stuff on the counter. And I went to look for my list. And I went and sat down until it was time to come here. Now, wow, what an experience. <laughs> How'd that make you feel? <laughs> Mad as a hornet. <laughs> <laughs>
It was my pleasure meeting all of you, and you all have a beautiful evening. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.